everyone, welcome to my Ultra Life. Today I'm in Jakarta, Indonesia. And I'm standing here in front of the Hotel Indonesia Roundabout. Behind me is the original Hotel Indonesia. It was built in 1962. It was the first five-star hotel in Southeast Asia. And at 12 stories tall, it was the tallest building in Jakarta. And why are we starting our run through Jakarta here at this roundabout? Well, Jakarta, I've been coming to Jakarta since 1988. And today, with all these huge buildings, I hardly recognize the city. But if I come to this roundabout, I know where I am. This roundabout in Plaza is really a, a central part of, uh, of Jakarta lifestyle. If you're gonna have a wedding, uh, you probably want to do it at the Grand Hyatt behind me. Uh, Plaza Indonesia is one of the better malls in Jakarta. So this is really kind of an uh, uh, economic cultural hub of the city. And uh, we'll run along and see more highlights of Jakarta. Jakarta is a really hustling, bustling city. It's only 6.30 in the morning and the traffic's already uh, quite loud. Believe me, it gets a lot worse. Jakarta is a city of 10 million people, but it's really a, a megalopolis. It's, the name is Jepoteca something, uh, and encompasses the cities of Jakarta, Tangerang, Bogor, and Bekasi, and it's about 30 million people. So this region, uh, this metropolitan area, is the second largest after in the world after Tokyo. So Jakarta has really become a big, big city. Behind me is the uh, Serena Shopping Mall. It was built in 1966 and at 15 stories was considered the first skyscraper in Jakarta. Serena was the first modern department store and the first store in Indonesia to have an escalator and indoor air conditioning. My friend told me that when he was a child, he was amazed by Serena because it had this moving staircase. You could step on the bottom step and it would take you all the way to the next floor. It was quite a curiosity at the grand opening. There were people lined up around the block to ride the escalator. the uh, National Resilience Institute of Indonesia is, but uh, the building represents the uh, colonial style of a lot of the government buildings here in Jakarta. All the government buildings are painted pure white and uh, have that kind of colonial, neoclassic look. Here's another example of a small government building. I don't know what they do here, but they uh, certainly have some barriers of entry. If you suffered through my uh, 30 days of the 100 push up a day challenge, you'll know that uh, it's been a while since I did a running video. The last year I've been really focusing on cycling because we did the uh, 6600 bike ride for my 60th birthday. September uh, and I really toned down the running because I was having some pain and really needed to focus on the cycling but uh, now that the cycling is over and I'm uh, traveling somewhere where I don't have a bike uh, I've started running again and it feels good so uh, there may be more running in my future let's see Behind me is the Ishtal Mosque, located here in central Jakarta. It is the largest mosque in Southeast Asia, with a capacity of 200,000 people. And uh, it's the second or third largest Sunni mosque in the world. Uh, it's called Ishtal because Ishtal means uh, independence in Arabic, uh, commemorating the Indonesian independence. Uh, funny enough, right across the street, from the, the largest Indonesian mosque in uh, Southeast Asia is the Catholic Cathedral in, of Jakarta. Uh, and actually, once I was in there for a wedding. So uh, it's, it's, it's funny just to see the uh, large mosque uh, right across the street from the Catholic Church. Uh, 
monument behind me is called Monument Pemba Hassan Irian Barat. And it's in uh, honor of the liberation of a uh, portion of Indonesia called uh, New Guinea, Papua New Guinea or Irian Jaya. Um, even though Indonesia gained independence from the Netherlands in 1945, uh, some of Indonesia was not ceded to them. So they didn't have New Guinea, they didn't have uh, Irian Jaya. So in the mid 60s, uh, the Netherlands finally agreed to uh, give that territory over to the Republic of Indonesia. And this monument declares the independence of the Irian Jaya people. Across the street here is the Merdeka Palace. Uh, think of this as the White House. Uh, this is their White House. From what I understand, the, uh, the president doesn't actually live here. He lives in another town nearby called Bogor. Uh, but it is the White House of Indonesia, the Merdeka Palace. I tried to get closer the other day to take a photo. And the uh, fellow over there in the guard tower uh, almost shot me. So I think I better stay on this side of the street today. Jakarta is the capital city of Indonesia. And while Indonesia is the fourth largest country in the world by population, many of my American friends have actually never heard of Indonesia and wonder where the hell am I going? Uh, Indonesia has a very rich history. Um, you know, you may have heard of the Spice Islands and the East Indies. Well, that's Indonesia. Indonesia is made up of 17,500 islands uh, in a long archipelago. And so it was uh, part of the trade routes and they got invaded uh, many times over history. So early on, uh, the Muslims were here. So there are actually areas still today because uh, it was Arabic, right? So, uh, and the Arabs had sultans. So today there are still sultanates in Indonesia and some places like Aceh province have their own, uh, their own rules and laws that are a little bit different than the rest of Indonesia. Uh, so they have these uh, different invaders came over time. In the 1500s, the Europeans started coming. First the Portuguese and then the, uh, the Dutch and the British and the French. Uh, the British opened up the uh, British East Indies Company uh, kicked out the Portuguese, I think, and then the Dutch kicked out the British, and uh, Indonesia ended up being a Dutch colony for over 300 years. In World War II, the Japanese invaded Indonesia and occupied Indonesia for about three years. And some people, fortunately, will say that Japan caused more damage in three years than, than the Dutch did in 300. At the end of World War V, World War V, at the end of World War II, in 1945, Indonesia declared its independence from the Netherlands. A four-year conflict ensued, uh, but they celebrate their Independence Day. It's August 17th, 1945. And it was interesting that I read that the Dutch, even though they, they turned over Indonesia, they didn't officially recognize Indonesia independence until 2005. I guess they're a bit stubborn. So right here in the center of Jakarta is a large uh, park with a national monument they call Monas. Uh, national Monument of Indonesia, Monas. So Monas was conceived in 1962 by President Sukarno but it was not completed until 1975. But, uh, and was recently, this park was recently uh, renovated and uh, it really is a beautiful uh, monument and icon for the city of Jakarta. The school kids were laughing and smiling Partly because a lot of them don't see white people that often. Uh, the other day I was in this park and four little Muslim girls asked me to take a photo with them. 
Kom maar, foto. Hallo, Chris. Hallo, Chris. Or maybe like most kids, they just want to have their picture taken. Kijk, zo remoen. Kijk, zo remoen.